So my name is Adam Dillon and I'm a grad student at Colorado State University and I'm here doing fox trapping with the island foxes trying to come up with population estimates. So we have one in the box trap today. Um, usually we have one in there at least every day. <laughs> um, so the first thing we do when we get one is we have a pit tag reader and put a little microchip in their, in their neck, kind of like you do your cat and dog. And so each one has its own like unique number. And so we'll go in there and try to check to see if it already has a pit tag or if it's a new one that's going to be potentially a pup or just never been pit tagged. So we do that first. Okay. Some of these guys know the drill already. So this little one has been a friend of yours in the past? has a pit tag it means at least it's at least a year old so we pit tagged either last year or sometime previously in the past it's pretty docile yeah yeah they really sometimes with pups or yearlings that have never been in the trap they kind of might freak out a little bit but usually even when you're just kind of sitting they, they, they just kind of stay still and they're usually pretty calm ones that seem to have already been pit tagged or processed last year usually are pretty calm uh, they don't freak out in the traps, which is really nice because then the chance of any injuries is really pretty low. So um, they know you're not going to hurt them. Yeah, and you'll see when I pull them out and stuff, they usually just kind of submit. <laughs> just kind of uh, relax. Good. So we mark down the pit tag number, and then after that, it kind of helps us out with what we're going to do with them. Um, since we know it's got a pit tag, it's at least an adult. It's not a puppy this year, so sometimes we'll take blood. But I took blood um, yesterday on a handful of these guys, so I'm not doing it today. Okay. Um, also, we'll put collars out on some of them, but we can't. We don't put them on pups. So if it's an adult like this one, we would know, like, okay, if I need to put a collar on it, it's already had a pit tag. It's at least a year old, so I'll get a collar ready. So like by figuring out if it's pit tagged, we can kind of get all of our stuff ready, and we can minimize the amount of time that we're actually like holding and processing the animal. So now. First thing we do is end up weighing the trap, and then we get the fox out. You guys do not weigh much. Some of the largest we have is like two and a half kilograms, which is about five pounds. Oh, some really? Some of the smaller ones on adult size are usually, can be like under two, like 1.7 or something. So like three and a half to five pounds is about the range for adults. Really pretty small, much smaller than house cats. I do, I put my thumb inside my fist and then just kind of put a fist on it and so they can't really get anything if they're going to bite. Uh -huh. They might try to like hit the glove but they don't try to hold on. Okay. And usually they don't normally try so I'll kind of put that over the back of their head and then just wrap my hands around uh, the kind of back of their neck. Mm -hmm. I'll try to tilt them so I've got a lot of their weight on my fingers as I'm pulling them out of the cage so I'm not pulling them up by their neck. Okay. So if they do kind of get stressed out, they can bite on that instead of the cage. Oh, that's good. Which like a out. chewy bar for dogs? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are in the canine family, right? Yep, yeah. So with coyotes, dogs, wolves, I mean, they look like a little dog. They but do. But they act like a cat. <laughs> oh, because they have, do they have claws like a cat? No, like, so all canids have uh, non-retractable claws, so it's like a dog, they're always out. Oh, but the cat will end up having them go in, and when you know with the cat's paws, you can kind of like push on them, and they'll really come out. Uh huh. All dogs just kind of always have their claws out. So okay. the first thing we do is check their teeth. Okay. We try to age them on their teeth. It's not a really great indicator how, um, but it's pretty good, and it's been pretty consistent. The same thing we've done for like ten years. Okay. So, you get this little bite bar on the back here. And this guy's got really nice... Beautiful teeth. White teeth. So 
So it's not very old. Not very old. You'll see other ones with tartar on their teeth. A lot of their canines will have been cracked or oh. decayed. Okay. Um, and then we usually end up, we end age, classifying by age by like the wear. I'm not sure if you can see, but on their back molars back here. And there's different kind of like classes once they kind of get worn down on the two points or if they get worn together. But this guy's really pretty brand new. So my guess, I'd be able to look it up in the database because it was previously tagged, but I'm pretty sure it was a pup last year. So this is just a one-year-old. Okay. Um, so they really stay pretty calm. And if they don't, this one's pretty calm. Usually yes. if they're not calm, by the time you put on a little blind, then they stay really calm. Because they can't see. Yeah, they just kind of... Oh, little hat. Yeah. Oh, so, interesting. He just lets you do that. And then he just kind of stay. Huh. So, then what I end up doing, I just kind of have a, a process I go through each time. Mm -hmm. So, then I'm going to check the sex. So, you can see here, anus, vagina, and the males will have a kind of long shaft up here, and then like an opening for the penis up there. Okay. So, it's a female, and then what we'll check with is to see if they have lice which mm -hmm. they usually don't, some of the pups will, and also to see if they have any signs of lactating this year. So this one, you can kind of see nipples have been used a little bit. Uh -huh. So she bred this year. So she was probably a one-year-old and already bred. Wow. Um, which is, yeah, some of them, like one-year-olds is kind of hit or miss. Sometimes they won't have bred yet, but there are definitely one-year-olds that will breed. Okay. Um, so then I'd mark down it's female. She showed signs of lactating, meaning she probably, you know, she bred this year. Mm -hmm. um, no lice. Um, we've got like the fur color, which is gray. Every once in a while we'll get one that's almost very brown. There's no black in there. It's mostly brown and white. Oh. Very rare, but uh, we'll get it every once in a while. Um, eye condition, we mark if it's normal, which both these are. Sometimes they'll get grass seeds in their eyes and it will kind of puff up and kind of um, like kind of pus and crust over. So we'll open those up for them, but most of the time they're pretty normal not taking any scat collection, we're not putting a collar on this one, we're not taking any blood, but we've marked it all down if we are. Um, so then the other thing we do is kind of like a pretty coarse parasite load. So we got a little flea comb, we do one um, comb over the back, one over the right side, one over the left, left side, and just kind of have a categories of how many fleas they have from none, few, moderate, you can even tell, like, I can, but... <laughs> Just the way that this comb goes through this fur, it's a young animal. Oh. When they're old, they'll have a whole bunch of stuff in there, and it's really pretty rough. But the fur here is really soft still, so it's pretty pretty young. So you got one flea, so I put a few fleas down. And I'll kind of give them a once-over and check their ears a lot uh, on the back side and on the top of the head to see if they have any ticks. And I take the ticks off, but we'll, again, we put that down on what uh, different categories of so now she's just laying in your lap? Yeah, I mean, after just a while, like a dog. I mean, you kind of get the, the feel of it, but once they're there, they don't fight too much. And I, I keep my hand around her neck, but mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not even really holding her. Right. It's just the fact that if they end up starting to move, I have something to hold her. It's that, and then trying to get their body, because they'll definitely twist and kind of kick a little bit. But if you give them a spot to stay and feel comfortable, she really is, is fine and you know, will stay there. You'll see at the end sometimes when you kind of let them go, I'll pull off the blind and they will just still stay there in this comfortable spot for a while. <laughs> so that's really all we end up doing. That's um, the procedure. Yeah, that's it. Um, and then you just let her yeah. go. So I'll show you with the collars. Well, I have one. I'll show you afterwards. But for, okay. for bleeding, what we end up doing is... Kinda, it takes a while and takes some, some definite time getting used to because you have to do it by yourself. And so I end up using my thumb to kind of put right around here on the inside of like the shoulder blade uh -huh. and kind of occlude the vein, the artery, so it will make it kind of tense up and then you can feel where it is up here. It feels like a little spaghetti noodle. And then I'll take a little scissors and just clip away a bit of hair and then use a syringe holding her head really quite tight. I've got my hands on, my fingers on both sides of her so I can kind of control her neck. And honestly, for the most part, when they get in this position, they just stay. 
We don't fight and stuff, and so I can never hold up the syringe really pretty easily. And we try to get like five to seven cc's of blood for genetics or disease, or just kind of to bank them while we already have them to see if there's anything else that needs later on. That's, but I don't need it from her. Um, and then I'll show you guys the collar afterwards when we let them go. Okay. Well, Great. Yeah. That's yeah, that's good. Good information. Thank you. Sure.